Okay, uh, I want to be careful now that I don't define foliage where it shouldn't be, so I'll use the edge of this brush to just kind of pick up the, this would be the light value in this, uh, in this foliage. We'll come back and shape it a little more with some, uh, with some darker, I'll do a dip into the uh, yellow ochre just a little bit there to add a little yellow to it. One of the uh, things you need to do is keep a little bit of uh, variety as you, as you move across your painting. You don't want it to be consistently the same color. Okay, that's that's defining the uh, the shapes a bit, and and uh, that's really all I wanted to do at this point because those will be shaped uh, later on. I'm going to let that uh, dry for a few minutes. Now that uh, that's drying a little bit, and uh, and I don't need that green right now, I've uh, cleaned the palette off a little bit to give me some more mixing room. So what I want to do now is to uh, mix some of this. Uh, burnt sand and ultramarine blue and define some of the rock formations. Uh, from the drawing you can't uh, tell but some of these are rocks and some are plants so uh, I will do that with uh, with the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue by mixing that uh, and, and one of the uh, one of the principles in, ter in color mixing here is that you don't over mix on the palette. For instance I will have quite a bit of blue on one side of a mix and I'll have some of the uh, burnt sienna on the other and just kind of dip out of those randomly and let it mix on the paper and it'll give uh, a little more interesting variety of, uh, of color and definition. You know, that's, a, that's awfully great so what I can do is come back and I can uh, mix a little little red with it, a little more blue if I need to. In order to uh, define these rock shapes what I want to see is, is not to see that get too, too boring there. And uh, the way to avoid that is to mix variety. Now, those colors will still get, blend together as this dries, so you will not notice the distinction of colors quite as much. Uh, it'll be subtle enough, but definite enough that it, uh, that it gives you variety and it's not boring to the eye. Okay, let's take the uh, masking medium off of the off of the building and see what we have. Now, there's two mistakes you can make with this if you're not careful. If you don't make sure the paper is dry before you take that masking medium off, it can peel off the surface of the paper. That's uh, that's kind of bad news. The other mistake you can make is uh, if you're if you're using a hair dryer or something to dry this, don't apply heat to this stuff because it gets tacky uh, if it gets hot. So uh, We'll, we'll take, uh, take that off now. You can just roll that with your finger and then pull it off. Or if you need an eraser for that, uh, if you just save this stuff and roll it up into a little ball, it makes a great eraser to remove uh, masking medium. So there's no need to buy an eraser for that. But uh, with that off now, you can see that we have some fairly accurate hard edges on the building itself.